So I think this is my favorite planting day of the year, um, planting the polytunnel. And there's a few reasons I think why I love it so much. Love it more than the summer planting. Because when I'm doing the summer planting, I'm often worried, am I doing it too early? Am I gonna lose these things to the frost? Because it's going in, you know, sometime in May, then there's lots of opening and closing of the doors, lots of watering, just lots of worry basically, and effort that goes in around the planting. Whereas when I'm planting now, beginning of October, and I'm putting in spinach and salad crops and spring onions and all those sorts of things, I'm not gonna worry about it. I can leave the doors open. I don't need to water very much. I know everything's going to survive and it just heralds a really nice relaxing few months ahead of me. So I just the quality of the food as well that comes out of the polytunnel is so nice and of course it's such a nice environment to work in especially right now when it's just starting to rain. So I've still got a few spares which is a nice situation to be in. So let's just take a look around. So we've got a few left tomatoes that are still hanging on in these pots. Hopefully these will keep us going for the next couple of weeks. I've still got these spring onions to plant. They're not quite big enough yet. I tried taking them out of the modules and the modules broke up. So yeah, those are going to be transplanted into the lettuces. I've got a few more spinach here. I've got one spinach bed still to plant outside but can't plant it yet because it's got uh, plenty of veggies in that I need. A few salads, mix uh, spares there. And then we've got the brassicas. So these are going in one of my low tunnels. So I've got quite a nice mix here. I've got some scarlet kale, I've got some black magic, I've got some curly kale. Um, and back home as well, I've got some other red um, curly kales and then we've got some Chinese kale at the back there so plenty of lovely little kales for late winter and early to mid spring. So these are the beds I planted last week so we've got some onions and these are tough ball I think multi-sown interplanted with garlic that will be harvested early as green garlic and then we've got spring onions and lettuces so these are down this edge Grenoble red these are Roxy these are Bijou I think more Grenoble red and these are interplanted with white Sturban or white Lisbon I can't remember exactly which one they are but anyway a spring onion uh, some parsley and then basically a repeat of what we've just got in the other bed Grenoble Red, Roxy and Bijou and then down there main crop well early main crop garlic which has not surfaced yet then up on the shelf we've got another tomato lots of tomatoes on here if I can just keep it going and get them ripe these are obviously carrots these are for early spring. And I've got a couple more there. So hopefully they will see us through until the carrots that I actually planted today in one of the cold frames. So they're for mid spring. And then I transplanted some chilies from the low tunnel where I planted the spinach. So I've got two of these plants. I'll just keep them in the polytunnel for as long as I can got my late French beans and this is just starting to come into harvest now which is kind of perfect timing so hopefully I'll get a decent crop off this during October and then I've got another plant in the conservatory to see us through until mid-November probably and then we won't have beans again until our early polytunnel crop which should come sometime in late May early June. I decided to leave one tomato in the bed it's got a lot of tomatoes still on it we harvested it yesterday 
so hopefully that will give us some and where that tomato is just there I'll just snip off the roots leave the roots in like I've done with all the other tomatoes and I'll just put one of those stepping stones in and that's so that I can get to the back of the beds really easily for harvesting makes all the difference it's easy worth losing just a little bit of space in order to uh, make all those weeks of winter and spring harvesting so much easier a little shelf it's just a bit of wire hooked through here and looped through this bit of wood got these little spring clips that fasten the shelf to the polytunnel main tube just stops it blowing around when it's really windy it's really rigid um, it's really well supported so I'm really happy with that I love this little shelf this side of the polytunnel is north so there's no shade at all to anything uh, that's growing in these beds and this is what I've just been doing today planting all these little beauties so first up is bijou this is a beautiful deep red lettuce um, can't tell that right now but it will be but it often doesn't survive all the way through uh, winter so I put this at the end so that comes sort of early February time this is the first bed to go and in here will go something like Calabrese then we've got Roxy one of my favorite winter lettuces this goes really deep red as well uh, it's really nice I've got loads of that outside though so I haven't planted very much of it then I've got Grenoble red can't get enough Grenoble red it's my favorite winter lettuce but I don't want to do have all my salads just with Grenoble red in them so we need a selection this is I call it canasta I'll put the right name up as an overlay on the video it's a really lovely crunchy summer lettuce but I have hopes I hopes for it over winter so I'm going to give it a go and then this is VC I'll put the right name up for that one and this is a little bit like Grenoble red but it's nice to have an alternative to try never tried this over winter so I'm excited to give it a go so this is the spinach bed we've got another big spinach bed outside in the under one of the low tunnels and we will have a third bed under the low tunnels as well and the reason that we've got so much is that this is that will be the main harvest bed over winter then come sort of mid february time the outside ones will start picking up so at that, that time i'll start putting in cauliflowers calabrese early bustle sprouts grain for leaves all sorts of different brassicas basically in here that will see us through the hungry gap by the time they're sort of overtaking the space which will be mid-march time this bed will be cleared of the spinach and there'll be loads of spinach outside so we won't miss it that's exactly the same as what we'll be doing with this lettuce bed as well um, anyway so Madeira, I don't have a lot of luck with it over winter so anyway we'll see how it goes I'm giving it one more chance I've moved it into this bed which is the best bed we've got just to give it the best possible chance then I've got giant winter all the way through here this is my most reliable grower so far then I've got Mikado which is our favorite summer an autumn spinach so we're going to give it a go over winter as well because it's just so good this is America another winter spinach we'll just give it a go I don't know if you can see this little piece of wood here that is part of my solution for quick and easy fleecing of this bed which I'll be doing when frost threatens although all this stuff can stand a frost it does kind of check the growth a little bit so if you can avoid the frost which is trivially easy with my little system I'll do another video of that later on then you might as well do it so I think that's pretty much it so I've just taken some perennial kale cuttings those will be really useful 
in spring when they'll replace some of my older plants so this is key for us a little space for Debbie and I to sit to have a bit of shelter have a drink have breakfast have lunch we don't actually have dinner in here but uh, we're often in here so it's really nice to just have a, a little spot to sit and I don't like moving things around all over the place so we just dedicate that little area to sit in. That leaves us this area so we'll have a few tubs like these of carrots that will overwinter for mid spring and then we'll also gradually start moving brassicas that, from these little modules into bigger pots so that they're reasonably good sized plants probably about a foot tall by the time we plant them into these beds that guarantees that we'll have them out by mid-may when the tomatoes need to go in in this rest of the space down here um, we'll also start doing our early potatoes so that's sort of february march april early may in these corners carrots in containers will start going into these pots um, and they'll stay there until the early courgettes go into these corners so we'll have a, you know, a couple of plants here and a couple of plants down the end there and we might have a few early tomatoes and bits and pieces in here as well and I think that's pretty much it I am wondering about putting something up into this roof so I, I'm, I can easily get underneath here there's quite a lot of uh, clearance above my head so I could in theory put a shelf up here a hanging shelf and grow stuff up into this canopy which I'm quite excited about also a hang up here lots of these hanging baskets full of strawberries so they come in about February time for my early strawberry crop in May and I think that is pretty much everything that's going on in the polytunnel apart from we'll probably put lots of green garlic in here so maybe all the way down the back there in between those lettuces lots of green garlic at the back green garlic is just ordinary garlic that's just harvested a few months early and you eat the whole plant so not just the uh, bulb but the stem as well and it tastes like garlic it's really nice it's a bit like a sweet leek and I just found a few spring onions that were ready to plant so I'll pop those in just to show you what that looks like so soon this whole bed will be planted with spring onions and it's nice to have these up here that are not quite so well on because they're obviously going to be a nice succession plant um, for these bigger ones I think I should just mention that I did have tomatoes and peppers in this bed and I left the roots in it's the first time I've ever done it in here do it all the time outside but it seemed to work really well I didn't seem to have any issues with the planting the existing roots didn't seem to get in the way at all and it was so easy to take the tomatoes out I just snipped, the, snipped them off the roots and just left the roots in so it was brilliant so I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.